Batman's villain roster is one of the most notorious of all time, but there's been decades for the DC crew to refine the list. However, considering Batman's been around since May 1939, happy anniversary by the way, living through many ages of comics including the notorious Silver Age, there have been a vast number of villains lost in time, and for good reason. But I'm here to dig up these forgotten gems of cringe for my top 10 dumbest Batman villains. Ratcatcher. The genius influence behind this villain's name was that he was a rat catcher for Gotham City. After losing his job, he started to notice he had a strange ability to talk and control rats. He then used this power to stage various crimes in Gotham to get everything he wanted. He even gathered enough rats to create a large army to threaten against Gotham. Rats, however, are more of a mild inconvenience than an actual threat. Humpty Dumpty Already looking like a giant egg, Humpty Dumpty was obsessed with the idea of taking things apart, and then putting them back together. So much that he pulled apart his domestically violent grandmother, only to sew her back together. His knowledge of fixing things came from library books, and he was tracked by Batgirl by his overdue book withdrawals. His final crime was trying to adjust the gears in a clock tower. This caused one of the hands to fly off and cause a chain reaction, killing dozens of people. If this wasn't weird enough, he also spoke in rhyme. Now, if you think this is the creation from the cheesy Silver Age of comics, you'd be wrong. He debuted in 2003. Calendar Man Put up your jukes, it's Boxing Day! And while that has literally nothing to do with actual boxing, Calendar Man will use that awful pun anyway. Now, originally I had Killer Moth on this list, but in recent iterations, Killer Moth has been useful for a corny cartoon villain in various animated series. However, Calendar Man has been irredeemable. This criminal will only perform acts of crimes on important dates. You got it, Mother's Day, Christmas, New Year's, but he also goes into some historical days as well. His costume is a red outfit draped with sheets of paper with numbers between 1 and 31 on them. These correspond with the amount of days in a month. The only tolerable way he's been used in recent date is his small cameo in the Arkham City game, in which you can visit him in a small cell and he will say a quip if you visit him on certain dates. King of Cats This guy's title doesn't seem so bad. Who wouldn't want to be King of Cats? But he really doesn't have anything to do with having a lot of cats or ruling them. No, the King of Cats is simply Catwoman's brother. He becomes a villain after learning about his sister, Selina's life of crime. He's not even original about his name either. He turns himself in after Selina pleads for him to do so, and luckily, Unlike many other villains, he sticks to his word after he's paroled. Thank goodness the creators let him slip away with what little pride he had, rather than drag him out with a bad premise he had, or give him an unnecessary tragic ending. Egghead This crime boss is pretty lame as well. He simply loves eggs. That's it. Egghead was created for the 1960 Adam West Batman series, and he's just a guy who likes eggs. I mean, really likes them. Of course, his head is shaved, and his head is roughly the same shape of an egg, so they call him Egghead. Get it? Yeah. Sweet Tooth. A lot of people know Sweet Tooth from the popular musical parody, Holy Musical Batman. And you would have thought that they made him up to be a parody of the Joker. But no, he actually exists as a castaway one-off villain. 
and he actually used candy as his signature. He tried to change Gotham's water supply into nothing but chocolate syrup if he didn't receive five million dollars, which doubles to ten after Robin makes a joke about his weight. Shame on you Robin, don't you know that's fat shaming? Magpie. This woman's motive is that she was obsessed with shiny objects growing up. She worked as the curator of the Gotham City Museum of Antiques to be surrounded by the valuables she loved. Upon realizing that she could never own everything shiny, her mind snapped and she became a thief. She would set booby traps for anyone who would try and stop her from completing her shiny collection. Kite Man Because being obsessed with eggs wasn't the most ridiculous thing to come up with for a supervillain motif, no, try Kite Man, who had an arsenal of kites to use at his disposal. He would ride around on a large kite and keep so many kites on him it would overwhelm his enemies. It seems the writers had a bit of remorse as he is one of the few criminals, including Sewer King, Mirage and Rawson, beaten to death by the Intergang boss Bruno Mannheim when the villains refuse to immediately submit to Intergang. Intergang proceed to wipe Kite Man's name for the public records as if he had never existed. How convenient. Crazy Quilt At first glance, this villain is seen as a master painter, but he leads a double life of crime. He leaves clues inside of his paintings to show what kind of crime he had committed. One day, one of his henchmen double crosses him and leaves him blinded from a gunshot wound. He later resurfaces after he volunteers for an experiment to try help him see again. Of course, the experiment goes wrong and he is left only able to see really bright colours driving him insane. Now fashioned with a helmet that can emit bright colour lasers so he can see, he comes up with the name Crazy Quilt. For reasons. Great motivation. Clue Master. Clue Master is pretty much a knockoff version of the Riddler. He was a failed game show host who lost his job and became a criminal, seemingly the second choice in anyone's profession in Gotham apparently, and every crime scene he would leave behind, on purpose of course, a clue as to where he was or who he was. A clue to the Batman. The, the Bat... It's just uh, to put this in perspective, he left a clue behind for the Batman, the guy who can figure out crimes when you don't leave clues behind. Because that's a smart way to criminal. Well done, Clue Master. You get an A for effort. No, you don't even get an A for effort. That is awful. You should give up. Ten Eyed Man. Ten-Eyed Man was originally a security guard and war veteran when, one day, a warehouse explosion leaves him blinded. He finds an underground doctor that is able to give him new eyes, but instead of reattaching them to his eye sockets, the doctor attaches them to his fingers. Now blaming Batman for his incident in the first place, he goes to seek revenge on the Dark Knight, with very sensitive fingertips. This man with eyes for fingers, challenging the Batman. Mmm, yes. Wonderbar. Wunderbar. Brilliant. These guys, oh my gosh, original the characters do not steal. These guys are genius. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's list, and if you did, leave a like. And if you want to see more of these, subscribe. I try to do these every week. And if you want to see another top 10 that's comic book related, click here for my top 10 Marvel Cinematic Universe Easter eggs. It could be something good to catch up on before you see Age of Ultron, which I still need to see actually. Damn it, I need to see that movie.